Amen. Well, once again, I'm glad you guys have all made it here this evening. Um, we've got our step-in uh, sound man back there in the back, Mr. Carl, if you see him back there. Um, we'll uh, be listening to this recording later, and everything goes great. He's the one that gets all the credit for it. Amen. And so uh, we're going to consider some things tonight here. You know, we face so many different things in life as uh, believers. It looks like I got my projector off. Let me turn this on real quick here. Um, we face so many different challenges in life, and we're always looking for remedies and ways to uh, correct the issues that we have going on in life. And there's uh, something that is available to each and every one of us as believers in Jesus Christ. Uh, it's the benefits of yielding to the Holy Spirit. And we consider Romans chapter 12 and verse number 1, where the Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. We've talked about this particular verse several times, and we're going to consider this verse tonight as we uh, take a look in several different areas of the Bible as we consider the Holy Spirit and what's going on here. Let me get this uh, presentation up here real quick. All right, so if we can begin in the book of Romans tonight, the book of Romans, and we're going to consider seven great reasons to yield to the Holy Spirit. And so if you'll turn to Romans chapter 6 to begin, and as we consider giving our bodies a living sacrifice, um, you know, there are some things that God really expects from us as believers in Jesus Christ. Now, we all know what yield means, right? A lot of us in here drive. Most everybody drives, and we got that little yellow sign that's a triangle upside down, right? It says yield. Does anybody know what that means? Who knows what yield means? Slow down. Slow down. Caution. caution. Proceed with caution. Give up. Just say forget it, huh? <laughs> Okay, give up to the other person. There you go. That's what yield really means. Yield, yield means giving somebody else the right of way. That's what yield means. As much as we think it means slow down and be careful and caution and watch out and all these other things, yield means giving somebody other than yourself preference in the situation. Now, when we're considering driving, that means you've got to blend in to the traffic well, right? And we've all been on the freeway where you've probably uttered these words as a, as a driver in California. Boy, they don't understand how to yield very well, do they? And merge into uh, traffic. Um, you know, it's something that you've got to learn. It's not a, a, a skill set that you have automatically. Um, we're typically used to putting our arm and our shoulder in front of, somebody, in front of somebody and cutting in line, right? I, I can remember as, as young as being, you know, first grade or so before I had a real distinct memory in my mind of doing one of those in a line to somebody. They were giving out who knows what, you know, at school, and I just thought I was going to try and butt somebody out of line. That's typically the way we respond. But the word yield really means giving a preference to that other person. Now, when I was in West Germany, yield does not mean the same thing there as it does here in, in the United States of America. Here you're really expected to give up your um, position to somebody else and prefer them ahead of yourself. In West Germany, it means get out of my way. <laughs> if you're going to try and get in here, they, they drive a little bit differently over there. But at the end of the day, yielding is for us, um, it's an action that we need to actually take in order for us to accomplish uh, the end result of yielding. So when we consider yielding to the Holy Spirit, the context that I want us to consider tonight is self or giving preference to God. And as we hear from God in many different ways, from reading the Word of God, to praying, to hearing messages preached, or being involved with Bible study time, God speaks to each one of us differently as we're involved in that type of stuff. And then we get to make the decision as to whether we, as individuals, want to agree with God on that, and actually yield to that. Amen? Now, once again, the things that I say here or from the pulpit or anywhere else, I would say this, um, you ought to check Scripture and make sure it's right, right? 
Um, and just like we hear so many different people that are out there on the radio and TV and stuff today, if you're listening to somebody else that's out there, you ought to be checking Scripture to make sure they're right as well. Because as we're talking about things here, really my opinion means like a big zero. It's, it's worth nothing. Okay? But the Word of God is what represents. The Word of God is what has the power um, in this circumstance. So Romans chapter number 6 tonight as we consider uh, seven great reasons to yield uh, to the Holy Spirit. The very first one here as we find in Romans chapter n- number 6 is it allows you to be fully used by God for His purpose. As we consider yielding to the Holy Spirit of God, we'll look to chapter 6 of Romans, verse number 13, where it says, Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. This particular chapter here is talking about walking in a newness of life after we get saved. And going on to say that we need to let not sin reign in our bodies. If we look back at verse number 12 of Romans 6, it says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Then it goes on to say, neither yield yourselves, right? We get to choose what we're going to do with our members. That's with our body. Amen? What are you and I going to choose to do? We get to choose whether we're going to yield and use these bodies that we have for things that will be offensive to God or things that will please Him. But once again, honestly, as we think about Romans chapter 12 and verse number 1 where um, we're commanded to present ourselves a living sacrifice, yielding to the Holy Spirit is really not an option for a true follower of Jesus Christ. It's not an option. You know, in, in the world, we so often will consider, you know, what are my options? Let me weigh out what I hear here. And when we think about business and getting involved with things and whatnot, but you know what? There's really no option for the believer when it comes to yielding to the Holy Spirit. But one of the great reasons, one of the great benefits that come from yielding to the Holy Spirit is that God will be able to fully use you for His purpose. Amen? John chapter number 14, and you know, we're going we're gonna to trip through, I'm not going to share, you know, a uh, hundred verses like I normally do, we're going to go through a, a several here, but I'd like for us to turn in the Bible to these different areas, it'll be helpful for us. The second thing here, the second great reason for us to yield to the Holy Spirit is that He will teach us everything that we need to know about Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit will teach us everything. John chapter number 14 and verse number 26. The Bible says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. The Holy Spirit's job is to stir up the Word of God within our heart and mind. And as we've listened to the Word of God, as we've studied the Word of God, uh, the Holy Spirit will uh, bring those things to remembrance and confirm in us that these things are absolutely true. And we need to know the things about Christ, don't we? And the Holy Spirit is going to teach us everything that we need to know about Jesus Christ. I mean, after all, that is where our life as Christians begins, isn't it? That's where it begins. That's where our life should uh, walk in. And that's where our life should end. Amen? Third thing here. A great reason to yield to the Holy Spirit. He gives us the words to speak. Have you ever found yourself in a position where you're talking with somebody, you're witnessing to them, somebody asks you some questions about the Bible? My greatest fear has always been somebody's going to stop me and ask me a question about something and I'm not going to know what the answer is. And they're going to know that I'm a Christian and then they're automatically going to say, well, what kind of Christian are you? I just asked you a question and you don't know the answer to it. Well, just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you have to know all the answers to everything. But you have to know the source of the answer. Amen? And the source of the answer is the very Word of God, our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. But there are so many times where God will give you uh, the right things to say when you need to say them. You know, most of the time I find myself 
when I've uh, studied and read in an area, and then I go out into public and I start having the opportunity to interact with people, the conversations that will come up um, while we're there are the things that I've just read about and studied about. It seems to happen like that a lot. Has anybody had anybody asking about the book of Revelation or been able to present the book of Revelation just because it's right on the fresh part of your mind? You know, you think about the different teachings and things and studies that you're going through now. God can uh, allow you to have the words to speak. Listen to Mark chapter 13 and verse number 11. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye. For it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. Jesus Christ is saying here, hey, when times get rough, not when you're in the market trying to figure out what you're going to say to someone. God's, of course, going to work in that moment, right? He goes all the way to the extreme and says, man, even to the place where they're going to take you up and be you know, persecuting you, God's going to give you the words to speak. And we've, we've all been there in our lives and witnessing to somebody where you're like, what in the world am I going to say? And then God opens up a big, long conversation for you. And that's a great benefit of yielding to the Holy Spirit Because the Holy Spirit is the one dictating the pace for us. And the Holy Spirit is part of the Godhead. And God will give you the answers that you need in the moment that you need them. He says even in the greatest place of turmoil, you need not premeditate and try and figure out what your answer is going to be if this circumstance arises. God says the Holy Spirit is going to give it to you. Amen? Number four. As we yield to the Holy Spirit, our prayers are answered. We consider as we yield to the Holy Spirit, we're agreeing with God that we're going to do whatever it is that we're uh, about to endeavor, and we're agreeing with God, and we're submitting to the Holy Spirit, and we're allowing the, the Holy Spirit to yield, and, or, or us to yield to the Holy Spirit. And you know, when we start agreeing with God, you know what happens a lot of times? We start praying for the things that God wants us to pray for. We stop praying for the shiny object that we might want to have in our driveway or in the garage or in the living room or these other things. We start praying for things like, man, Lord, bring somebody to church today that's not saved. Help me to, help me to witness to Auntie or, or whoever it might be about the Lord because she needs to get saved. You know, does God want us to do those things? Of course He does. And as our will aligns with God's will, we'll see our prayers getting answered in a tremendous way because God is all for volunteers that want to serve Him. You know, it's not like the, uh, the, the kickball when we used to play in grade school, right? And they'd line you all up against the backstop out there. Maybe they didn't do this for you, but they did it for me. They line you all up on the backstop. And man, you hope you had a reputation of somebody that was doing well in sports because otherwise you might be the last one picked. <gasps> right? What a big deal, you know, uh, for, a, for a young person. And we consider, you know, even in that place, I don't know if you've ever been in a place where your life, but in your life where this happened, but, you know, sometimes there's an odd number of young people that are waiting to play the game. And if you have a real tyrannical teacher, the teacher doesn't say, okay, it's just going to be uneven. This team's going to have 17 and this team will have 16. She'll say, "Uh, Susie, you're going to sit out this game, okay? Uh, We don't want to make it unfair for anybody. and We want to play. And you end up sitting out even though you wanted to play. You know what? When you raise your hand to God and you say, Lord, I want to serve you and I want to do everything for you, He is not going to overlook you or sit you on the sideline because He has too many people involved in the game already. He takes everybody. Everybody that volunteers, He's going to go ahead and and take you. But you know, as we yield uh, to the Holy Spirit of God, He is going to answer our prayers. Take a look at Deuteronomy chapter number 10 tonight. Deuteronomy chapter number 10. This is a a part of Scripture that I know that we're familiar with. Verse number 10 of Deuteronomy 10 says this, And I stayed in the mount according to the first time. Forty days and forty nights, and the Lord hearkened unto me at that time also, and the Lord would not destroy thee. You remember Moses, right? 
You remember as Moses was there on the mount the first time for that 40-day period of time, his fellowship was broken up. You remember? God said, get thee down from this mountain. This stiff-necked people down in the valley, they're, they're starting to lose their minds. They've created this golden calf. They forgot their ways already. And as Moses went back up onto the mount a second time, you remember God had about enough of the children of Israel. You remember that? And that man Moses, as he became a seasoned leader, he stood in the gap for the people that he was leading. And he said, no, Lord, if you're going to blot them out, you're going to blot me out too because I'm with them. And God changed his mind and spared judgment against the children of Israel because Moses talked with God and said, God, this is what I think you ought to do. Take me out with them if you're going to take them out. And, and you remember, Moses reminded God like God needs reminding. Uh, Moses just simply rehearsed God's promises and from his viewpoint, what he thought might happen if God violated his, keeping his promises. And God listened to Moses' request and he spared the children of Israel from his wrath and indignation because Moses prayed. Because Moses had conversation with God. And you know, as we yield to the Holy Spirit and we consider doing the things that God would have us to do, we're going to see that more and more of our prayers are going to be answered because they align with His will. Amen? Another great benefit from yielding to the Holy Spirit. Number five. He will give you wisdom. He will give you wisdom. We all know James 1.5 that says if you lack wisdom, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God because God only has a little bit. Is that what it says? No way. He says He abradeth not. He's going to give it to us. He's, he's not going to hesitate in any way, shape, or form. If, we, if we, any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given you. This is God's wisdom that He has, and He will freely give it to us. The Holy Spirit plays an instrumental part in understanding the wisdom of God as we study the Word of God. James chapter 3 and verse number 17 but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of the righteousness is sown in the peace of them that make peace. We consider the great wisdom that's available to us if we simply yield to the Holy Spirit. You know, we always are looking for knowledge and wisdom. I mean, you consider how much training you do in a workplace. It doesn't even matter what kind of job you do. It doesn't even matter whatsoever. There's always going to be some kind of training that they're going to want you to participate in so that you could become a better asset for the people that you're working for. They know that knowledge is going to provide you with the power that you need to accelerate their business or wherever you are. They're not doing it because they love you. you. You understand that, right? You're being provided training and it's costing a lot of money on the payroll, but they're doing it because they expect something in return from you. They expect you to retain it and to become a little more efficient in what you're doing so that it benefits them, therefore giving them a return on their investment. Amen? But you know what? God's wisdom and God does not work on that same plane like a secular business would work. Amen? First of all, God don't change any of the rules. God's wisdom, you know, we have it right here. We have His Word right here, and as we consider these things and we pour God's Word into our heart and our minds, um, as we collectively act on these things the way God would have us to act on them based on His principles, that's simply called wisdom. Maybe some of you have been in a place in life before where you've, you've made a blunder in some way, shape, or form and you've learned and not done the same thing the next time because you've already experienced that. You've already made the blunder. You've, you've learned about it. I told you uh, guys about me changing my transmission fluid on my truck when I was 15 and changing it two times in the same day, but I was intending to change the oil, 
boy, I've never done that again. You know what I mean? I've learned, I, I learned a little bit about where the plug is for the oil pan and compared to the, the transmission pan. But you know what? God's wisdom, it is so abundant and it is absolutely free. And God gives it to us freely, not with the intent of because it's going to benefit Him, but it's because it's going to benefit us as we gain godly wisdom. We can then act out our lives and we can please Him with the way that we are thinking and behaving and just the manner of life, the way that we're living life. A great benefit of yielding to the Holy Spirit, He will give you wisdom. Number six, He will keep you, or I'm sorry, He will help you in your time of weakness. He will help you in your time of weakness. Back to Romans chapter number 8. He'll help you in your time of weakness. You know, there are so many times where um, the Holy Spirit of God will uh, bring verses to my mind as I am um, being involved with being tempted. And God will bring some verses in there. And uh, uh, he'll, he'll share these things. You know, a lot of times when, you know, as a younger Christian, I can remember as I would try and share the gospel with somebody, um, and they wouldn't want to listen to me. And if they'd get combative with me, um, that almost gave me license to just, well, forget you then. You don't, you don't know what you're talking about. And, and, and very easily, um, I could act harshly towards somebody. But you know what? We normally only do that when we're feeling really weak. <laughs> You know that? Um, we'll, we'll try and act out and lash out a little bit. And you know, God is very uh, likely to help us as we humble ourselves and as we give ourselves to Him in these times of weakness. I found that God uses me more in my times of weakness than He does in my times of strength. He does it. Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 26 The Bible says, Likewise, the Spirit helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. It's just amazing to see as we consider on how God works and and as a believer in Jesus Christ, God gives us the, the Holy Spirit to indwell our bodies and even in times in weakness where I know you guys have been there, where you've been so broken and so down and so discouraged that you're laying on your face before God in tears without any words coming to your mind or coming out of your mouth. That's the place where the Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf. And says, Papa, they're, they're crying out. And God knows our hearts, doesn't He? In fact, the Bible says God is greater than our hearts. And by the way, the Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity and God. And God shows mercy on us and even intercedes on our behalf um, and prays for us, gives utterance uh, uh, and carries that to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as our advocate. It's amazing to see the teamwork of the Trinity. Amen. The Holy Spirit will be there to help us in times of weakness. Turn with me to the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter number 4. Daniel chapter number 4. This brings us to the 7th great reason to yield to the Holy Spirit. Daniel chapter number 4. We consider the first benefit being the fact that God can use us in a mighty way if we yield to the Holy Spirit. He'll teach us everything that we need to know about Jesus Christ if we yield to Him. He'll give us the words and the ability to say the right things as we find ourselves in tough positions if we yield to Him. He'll answer our prayers in a way like never before if we find ourselves yielding to Him. He'll give us the wisdom that we need so desperately if we simply will yield ourselves to Him. And when we find ourselves in those 
horrible positions in life where we feel oh so weak and, and traumatized and discouraged and distraught and anxious, the Holy Spirit is there to lift us up and help us in those times of weakness. And then the seventh great reason to yield to the Holy Spirit is the simple fact that He lives within us. And you consider that we have God living inside of us. This is something that is unprecedented when we contrast the Old Testament and the New Testament. When we read our story here in Daniel chapter 4 tonight and see this young one named Daniel um, that was here, Listen what the Bible says here in Daniel chapter number 4. The great power of God as it was exhibited here in Daniel's life. Listen as King Nebuchadnezzar praises God for His great wonders. Verse number 1 of Daniel 4. Nebuchadnezzar the king unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. <clears throat> Consider that in itself. The king is proclaiming God's wonders and he's proclaiming them to all nations and tongues and, and everything in this uh, planet that he lives in. Verse number 2, I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God hath wrought toward me. He's given an eyewitness of what's happening here, right? Verse number 3, How great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and His dominion is from generation to generation. Nebuchadnezzar was at rest in mine house and flourishing in my palace. And I saw a dream which made me afraid. And the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Therefore made I a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known unto me the, inner, uh, the interpretation of the dream. And so Nebuchadnezzar here is having this dream and he's freaked out by this. And he's rehearsing this after the fact and saying, man, I was, I was distraught by this, I was upset by this, and so I made a decree to bring in all the wise men that I had to come and give me the interpretation Verse number 7, Then came in the magicians and the astrologers and the Chaldeans and uh, the soothsayers. And I told them the dream before them. But they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. Well, of course not. They're just people, aren't they? You know, there's soothsayers all over the place. There's plenty of them right on Beach Boulevard. I saw a bunch of them down on uh, uh, Catella as well. And uh, I'll be in a mood one day and I'll go in there. And uh, uh, you know what? That's, that's scary business, going and dealing with a soothsayer. Somebody that was relying on demonic powers for their abilities and whatnot. And some of them are, some of them are, are just frauds altogether. They're not relying on that demonic power uh, at all, but they're trying to trick people. And I see here as Nebuchadnezzar calls all the wise people, he asks them to do something that only God can do, and none of them can do it. Not even those that are serving the enemy, they can't do it. They can't pull it off. Verse number 8, But at the last Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belshazzar, according to the name of my God, and in whom is the Spirit of the holy gods. And before him I told him the dream, saying... Now Nebuchadnezzar doesn't get everything yet, does he? But he knows this man Daniel, this young man Belshazzar, man, he's got the Holy Spirit of God within him. And Nebuchadnezzar may not understand everything, but he knows this, his wisest man couldn't help him at all. And he turns to this one named Daniel that he knows that the true and living God is resting upon him. Now this is the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. This power that we're going to see here that Daniel is able to tap into was only placed upon those that made the decision to serve the king in the Old Testament. We have the great privilege, every one of us in here that has trusted Christ as our Savior, we have this very same Holy Spirit living within us today. Unprecedented. It wasn't like that in the Old Testament. But Daniel's got the Spirit of God on him and Nebuchadnezzar recognizes that. And this is what he says to him in verse number 9. Oh, Belshazzar, master of the magicians. He knows he's above all, doesn't he? He's master of the so-called magicians that the king has. Because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee. 
and no secret troubleth thee. Tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen and the interpretation thereof. Nebuchadnezzar recognizes that nothing bothers Daniel. Nothing bugs him. It doesn't matter what the position he's in. Man, he's already stepped out of the fiery furnace, right? What else? God is with this man. And he says, now just give it to me. Tell me what my dream's about, Daniel. Verse number 10, Thus were the visions of mine uh, head in my bed. I saw and behold a tree in the midst of the earth, and the height thereof was great. And the tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto heaven, and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. The leaves thereof were fair, and the fruit thereof much. And in it was, a meat, was meat for all. The beasts of the field had shadow under it, and the fowls of heaven dwelt in the bows thereof, and all flesh was fed of it. I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and an holy one came down from heaven and cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree and cut off his branches, shake off his leaves and scatter his fruit. Let the beast get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts in the grass of the earth. Nebuchadnezzar gives this dream to Daniel. Now, if you haven't read this portion of Scripture in a long time, even though you're a believer, I could say, what does all this mean? There's a lot of stuff here, isn't there? Only God can give this answer. Even Daniel in the height of his glory without God cannot touch this request. He can't touch it. It's only achieved as the Holy Spirit of God is residing uh, within Daniel as he hears this, these words of this dream given to him by the king. Remember, the Holy Spirit of God will give us the answers that we need in the time that we need it. I don't think Daniel was laying awake late at night trying to figure out what's the next request I'm going to get. He's relying on Almighty God, isn't he? And Nebuchadnezzar even recognizes that. And so he throws out this dream to him, all these details, and says, give it to me. I need to know the interpretation of it. Verse number 16. Let his heart be changed from a man's, and let a beast's heart be given unto him, and let seven times pass over him. King Nebuchadnezzar doesn't realize that his dream that he had is about himself. And some things that are about to happen in his life, and as Daniel is here listening to these things, as the Holy Spirit of God is giving him the answers, Daniel is here milling these things over in his mind. He's probably thinking, oh man, do I want to say these things to the king? God is giving him the interpretation of this dream. And he's standing before the king knowing it's about him. Think about that. God will reveal some things to us. And we may have trouble considering taking action on it. We can find ourselves in a spot where we know that God is working in an amazing way and we, we see Him and He tells us that we gotta, we got to do something, we got to participate, and then we see what's really on the table. That's where it comes choice time, right? Do I want to yield to what God's telling me to do or Am I going to allow this old flesh and bone body that I live in to start letting fear permeate through my veins and all these ungodly thoughts and why I'm not going to do what God's called me to do? Daniel is here listening to this. Verse number 17 of Daniel chapter 4. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whosoever He will, and setteth up over it the basest of men. God doesn't need some smart, genius person to do His work. He'll use a smart, genius person if they raise their hand and volunteer. 
He'll use them. But God typically uses the basest among us. Because it's that much more of a privilege for God to watch the people around us as people hear us speak to go, what? <laughs> Remember what they said about Jesus? Isn't, isn't this the son of the carpenter? Like what? Like what? Huh? Like what? Uh, what's he talking about here? You know, I was sharing with somebody not too long ago. I, I went back when I was young and I first got saved with a mission to go back and reach all my, my, my cronies, the people that I ran with when I was young. Um, a lot of them I had to go to prison to go visit them, to give them the Word of God. And it's amazing to see what God can do using the basis people around us. I'm one of them. I remember showing up and they didn't believe me. They knew me as a low down, no good. What? What are you here? Who, who are you to talk for God? Brother, I'm a servant now. I'm a soldier and you better listen up clearly, brother. God can do some amazing things through us, but you know what? He uses the least of us to do it. I remember sharing with a number of my friends that my life had changed. It had been 20, you know, it had been a long number of years. It hadn't been 20 years yet. It had been 10 plus years. And they wouldn't believe me that I was a Christian. They wouldn't believe me. But you know what? God uses the likes of you and I to give out the message, doesn't He? We don't have to be some great with all kinds of letters behind our name of degrees that we have. For God to use us. Verse number 18 of Daniel 4. This dream, I, this dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now thou, O Belshazzar, declare the interpretation thereof. For as much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation, but thou art able, for the Spirit of the holy gods is in thee. Amazing to see King Nebuchadnezzar coming to this place and he's, he's really putting it here right in the lap of Daniel so that God can really make Himself known to the whole kingdom. And not only the whole kingdom, but to the king himself. Verse number 19, Then Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, was astonied uh, for one hour and his thoughts troubled him. We talked about that, right? He's probably thinking, man, how could I, how could I give this to him? He's probably going to want to take my head off or throw me back into a, a lion's den. Who knows what he's going to want to do here? The king spake and said, Belshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belshazzar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee, and the interpretation thereof to thine enemies. The tree that thou sawest which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto the heaven, and the sight thereof to all the earth, whose leaves were fair and the fruit thereof much, and in it was a great meal for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and upon the branches the fowls of heaven uh, had their habitation. It is thou, O king, thou art grown and have become strong, for thy greatness is grown and reacheth unto heaven and thy dominion to the end of the earth. There is something that's happened here, isn't it? Nebuchadnezzar has become a great man, a great king. But you know what? He's lacking something. He was having trouble before this whole experience acknowledging who God was. He would be known as an enemy of God. Verse number 23, And whereas the king saw a watcher and a holy one coming down from heaven and saying, Hew down the tree and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with the band of iron and brass and the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts of the field, till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord the king." that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. And they shall make thee to eat the grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee, till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and dwelleth it to whosoever he will. <clears throat> you consider this place for King Nebuchadnezzar. He lost his mind. He was one of the greatest. And yet God sent him out to the fields to live as a crazy man, 
not even knowing his own mind, eating grass from the field as he was an ox. We've all seen people do some stuff out on the street, right? I've seen people eating out of the fields. But they weren't kings and rulers. And But you know what? God can still be using some of these things in the people's lives around us. Hardship tends to turn people back to Him. You know what? We see Nebuchadnezzar here. He finds himself in a place where he loses his mind and he finds himself out in the field. And it wasn't until he finally came to only by God's almighty power allowing him to come back to his senses. And here Nebuchadnezzar is giving God the praise and the honor that's due to him and re- rehearsing this story here. But you know what the focus of this is? The Holy Spirit lives within each one of us here that know Christ as Savior. This same Holy Spirit that indwelt Daniel at this time and gave him the words to speak, gave him the impossible thing, the interpretation of a dream that another man had. Great power resides within each one of us. Why wouldn't we want to yield to the Holy Spirit? Why wouldn't we? Seven amazing reasons will be able to be used of God and for His purpose. The Holy Spirit will teach us all things pertaining to Jesus Christ. He'll give us the ability to have the right answers and the right words to speak. As we yield to the uh, Holy Spirit, He'll answer our prayers as we'll see our lives change and our thoughts and intents beginning to line up with what God's are. He'll give us the wisdom that we desire, the great godly wisdom. He'll help us in our greatest times of weakness and we can't forget that this great Holy Spirit with this great amazing power lives within each one of us that have trusted Christ as Savior. Why would you not want to yield to the Holy Spirit? We run around in the world today trying to acquire wisdom, trying to acquire security, trying to... uh, uh, acquire uh, at times authority and power and taking different positions. Um, You know, we're looking for some things and people are looking for some things, but you know what? God has the answers for all of these. And we need to remember that it's not an option for us to choose not to yield to Him. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice commanded of us. Verse 2 tells us, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye might prove that acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen? The Word of God is what will change us. Not trying to chase down the things in the world. Although the enemy likes to do that. He hangs out that shiny object in front of us and man, he can get us to trail right down the road chasing after stuff. I remember as a young man, I just got saved and I remember my boss of a, I was an assistant manager of a grocery store, newly promoted and I had a, an amazing store manager that was willing to show me everything that he knew. And the first thing when I went to work for him, he did this. He reaches into his desk and he pulls out some paperwork and he goes, and he slides it out in front of me. And it was one of his pay stubs. I've never ever had anybody do that before. Shows one of his own pay stubs in front of me. And I looked down and went, that's how much money you make? And he says, you'll be making that pretty soon too. And I remember thinking, man, that was pretty easy. This path to get here is pretty easy. But you know, money's not everything. Amen? I got lots of friends that took the path of seeking riches and a lot of them became millionaires. I've got several friends that have checked out of this world and taken their own lives because their millions didn't quite bring them the pleasure that they thought it would bring. And checked out with millions of dollars in the bank. We have a power and authority that resides within us that can help us to overcome our greatest fear and our greatest obstacle. But all we have to do in order to tap into that is yield 
when God speaks to you, it's best for us to acknowledge that, be moved to action as a result of it. If we don't get moved to action when God is speaking to us, when the Holy Spirit is knocking on our heart, we get callous towards the things of God. And the more and more times we refuse listening to the Holy Spirit, we get to the place where we begin to grieve the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God will be very disappointed in our our lack of action as God tries to convict us of different things in our life. And if we do that too often and too long, we grow very cold to the things of God. We get to the place in life where we don't even want to hear from Him anymore. We don't even want to be around Christians anymore because, man, that is very convicting when you're living a life away from the Lord. We need to yield to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's present our bodies a living sacrifice. Let's take a moment tonight before we close in prayer for each one of us individually to take a few moments and to pray and ask God to work in your life. Let's pray. Lord, we love You so very much. We thank You for convicting our hearts and helping us to see the things that we ought to do. We pray that You'd help us to see the great benefits that come from yielding to You. Lord, we pray that You would just help us as we go throughout this week. Help us to consider Your ways, Lord, as the Holy Spirit stirs those things up within us. Help us to yield and give the right of way and first place in our life to You. Help us to be the witness that we ought to be as we go out this week, Lord. Give us the words to speak. For we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.